So in this video I want to take you through the process step by step for modeling this low poly deer. And it's going to be a beginner friendly tutorial so if you have very limited experience with Blender, hopefully you should be able to follow along with this. I'm not going to go over the really basic stuff in Blender like the nav viewport navigation and stuff like that. Um, so that is a prerequisite to know. So to start with I'm just going to delete out our camera and light for now and just focus on this default cube. And now when modeling any character you only really want to model half the character and then mirror it to the other side. This saves you a lot of the work, keeps everything perfectly symmetrical. So the way we do this in Blender is to cut the mesh in half and then use a mirror modifier. Now in order to cut the mesh in half I'm going to need to add a loop cut and that's just adding an extra ring of uh, vertices around the, the mesh. And to do that I'm just going to use Control R and you can see we get a yellow indicator that tells us in what direction the loop cut will be going. So if I place one down the middle and then press escape to cancel it so it doesn't slide along the mesh. Then what I can do is grab all four vertices on the left side, press X, delete the vertices, and now I have half a cube. Then if I go into the modifiers tab, which is just this little blue wrench, I can add in a mirror modifier. And then if I set the axes to Y in this case, you can see we get our cube back. There's a slight problem at the minute though. If I drag the vertice from one side across the middle line into the other, you can see it will self intersect in a bit of a weird way. So to avoid this, I'm going to turn on clipping in the mirror modifier. And you can see now we can't move anything past the middle point. Now that I've got this, this is pretty much my base that I'm going to start modeling from. So what I'm going to do is just grab the back face and start extruding it out with E. Now there are three selection modes you can use for your modeling, vertex, edge, and face. And these are all useful in their own ways and in their own scenarios. but Personally, I like to switch between them all depending. So, for example, when I'm extruding out this back face, I go into face select mode. But when I want to move an edge, I use edge select, and if I want to make more fine tweaks, I'll use vertex select. Now, you could do everything with vertex select, but sometimes it's just a bit easier to select full faces at a time. You can also switch between these quickly using 1, 2, and 3 on your uh, keyboard. Another really useful tool to know about is the slide tool. So if I grab an edge and double tap G, you can see I can slide it along in line with all the other geometry that's already there. But other than that, for this model, there aren't any other major tricks I'm going to be using. I'm just going to be using the move, rotate and scale tool and just a bunch of extrusions, edge loops, and maybe some sliding here and there. I just want to quickly interject and say that this video isn't supposed to be about um, the exact sequence in which you should press every single button to achieve the deer model. It should be more about teaching you the general principles of modeling so that you can then go and take those principles into making your own characters and models. And ultimately that will allow you to create anything that you want to. Some other useful selection tools to know about is edge loop selection. So if you hold alt and click on an edge or a vertex, it will select a ring of those edges or vertices. And I use this all the time, but sometimes you don't want to select a full ring. And that's where the shortest path selection tool comes in really useful. I use this occasionally, not so much in this model, but it's just a way to quickly select a row of faces basically. So if you select a face or a, you could do this with anything, a vertex edge or a face, select one and then control click another, it will calculate the shortest path between them and select all those vertices. And as I go through modeling this, you'll see me alternate between using you know, a variety of these selection techniques. It really just depends on the scenario. And as you continue to model, you'll get more and more used to um, what you like to use and when. Now that I've roughly got the head, what I'm going to do is extrude it out to make the body. And you'll notice that what I also do is delete out the back faces of the head just to give me a clean edge loop that I can select. And that just makes it easier to extrude. Also, when you're moving and rotating things, it can be really useful to lock it to an axis. Just so you don't get into a bit of a mess with everything. So you can see if I rotate freehand, things might get a little bit weird based on the perspective. But if I rotate and then press either X, Y, or Z, I can lock it to an axis and make sure that, you know, my rotation stays nice and clean. Another really cool thing to note is with the edge slide tool, 
if you actually press C when you're sliding, it will remove clamping, and that basically means that you can slide the edges past their original position. And that's how I extend out the neck here without having to extrude it again. Then I just start pulling the edges out for the body. Just, you know, using really basic move and scale operations, rotating stuff. Looking at the reference a lot is the most important thing, really. Now, one last trick I'm going to use to help get this low poly look is actually using another modifier. And this modifier, what it's going to do is basically triangulate our mesh and make it even more low poly based on a slider that we can control. So this modifier is called the decimate modifier. So I'm just going to search for that and add it after the mirror. And then if I slide the slider down, you can see how that affects the look of the model. And I'm also going to enable symmetry just so that it's symmetrical on both sides. Then for the legs, what I tend to like to do is just first of all get the position roughly right, adding in edge loops where I need them to get that right, and then just extrude them sort of straight down. So extrude and then G and Z move it down. Then for the base of the legs, I like to just get a nice flat base to, to start with. Um, so I grab the bottom two faces, hit S, and then Z and 0 to flatten it on the Z axes. And it's important to have enough edge loops uh, running vertically down your legs as well, so I always add in those. And I try and slide them around to make it not so square and blocky, but a bit more of an organic shape. And legs can be a little bit tricky, but it's important just to take it slow with them and try and match the reference as best you can. And I always tap in and out of edit mode with, when using the decimate modifier to see how it will look because you can't preview the decimate modifier in edit mode. You have to be in object mode. Then once I'm roughly happy with the legs, I will start scaling them around and moving them into position to try and get that nice tapering. Add in the joint with just another extrude. The paws, or the hooves, I guess, are super easy. I just extrude out and scale out. That's pretty much it. And just hit F to fill that bottom face. And you know, I, I will come back to a lot of this stuff that I'm doing later down the line and refine it, but sometimes it can just be nice to get a, a strong base down initially. Now that I have this sort of front half working, I'm going to go ahead and add some ears. And now when I first started modeling, I used to think that everything for one character had to be one object and... It was sort of cheating to add multiple objects that weren't connected and stuff, but that is not the case, definitely. So what I'm going to do is actually just add in a plane for the ears. And then I'll just move the plane into position, scale it and rotate it around. And then just with a few basic extrudes, get that shape on the ear. Now I want to mirror this, but... You'll notice the mirror modifier won't work by default because it mirrors based on where the little uh, orange dot is, the object's origin. So what we instead need to do is mirror it based on another object. And in this case we can just select the deer for this as the deer is perfectly central. And that will make the ear mirror perfectly onto the other side, again selecting the Y axes. And you'll notice me add a, few, a bit of extra geometry around the joints on the leg. And this is just for when we come to rig this potentially. It can be really useful to have more geometry where things pivot. And you don't have to worry about that too much now, but it can be useful to know. But obviously the decimate modifier changes all this anyway. But I just like to do it as habit. I'm constantly looking around to see if there's an angle that I didn't 
didn't see this deer from where there's a really straight edge or something and I try and curve everything and match the reference as nicely as possible again. Just try and get some appealing shapes in the form. Then just working out through the back legs, it's the exact same process, but for the back legs I like to extrude them out a little bit, then scale them in to give it a little bit more of a bulge. But I again just grab the bottom two faces, extrude them down, flatten them out, and do all my tapering afterwards. And just try and avoid it looking like a box by sliding those edges around until it's nice and curved and natural. There's never really a right or a wrong way to model or select things, it just comes down to personal preference really, and this is just how I like to model. The tail's super easy, I just continue to extrude that, that back edge loop out, scale it in and then start extruding out because now what we've got is roughly circular in shape. I might slide some vertices around to get it a bit more circular, then I can start extruding that and scaling it out to make the tail shape. And then once I get to the end, I just hit F, fill that face, and that's pretty much it. The antlers, what I'm going to do is again just model the one and mirror it across to the other side. But I'm going to use a bit of an interesting technique to model the antlers. And you could, you know, do this normally using starting with a cube and just extruding it around and messing with the geometry until you get the shape that you want. But that's quite a destructive and difficult way to do it because uh, when, when it branches off, you're going to need to manually sort of figure out all that geometry it can be a little bit tricky so what i'm going to do is instead use a modifier to help me out there's a really neat modifier for this it's called the skin modifier and what this will allow me to do is essentially make uh, extrude out a single vertice and then uh, it will sort of add thickness to that vertice and it will handle the branching and everything really really automatically so to get a single vertice all i'm going to do is take a plane uh, position it where i want the antlers to start, then select all the vertices in edit mode, make sure you're in vertex selection, I'm going to hit M to merge, and I'm going to merge at center, and now if I start extruding, I just have the one vertex. And you can see how the skin modifier is adding some nice thickness to this. To control the thickness at each point, you can use Control A and then drag, and that will sort of scale the radius in or out. So as you go along, just scale it in to give, make the horns go to more of a point, and you can just extrude out branches and anything you want to do. Then just again add in the mirror modifier, mirror about the deer, and we're done.
So yeah, that pretty much concludes the modeling. I just modeled up a simple backdrop here, so I gave it a gray material. Just so I could see the shading a little bit better. And I'm just going to shade this looking at it in Eevee or Material Preview mode. And you can see what modes are in there on the top right. The shading, I'm just going to keep it really simple, just block colors basically. So all I need to do is add, go into the Material tab, add a material to this deer. I'll start with the base color, which will be like this sort of light brownish color. But then obviously I want to add some highlights to this deer. I want to add some lighter areas. So um, to do this, what I'm going to do is just select the faces in edit mode that I want to be a different material. Then in the material tab, click the little plus icon, add a new material, make it that light color. And then if I click assign with those faces selected, it will make all those faces inherit that light color. It's just a really quick way to get these, get their desired result. Now you can see because we're using the decimate modifier, we're not going to get complete precision on what faces are assigned to what colors. And this isn't really a problem for the majority of the model. But when it comes to doing something like an eye or a nose, this is going to be a bit of a problem. As you can see, it sort of stretches it out and there's no real way we can avoid this. So. What I'm going to do now, because I'm happy with how the model looks, I'm going to actually apply this decimate modifier. And by applying it, what that means is that um, instead of it happening after the modeling, when I go into edit mode, I'll be able to see its effect. It will all be sort of baked down into the model. I won't be able to change the level of detail anymore. All the options will go. It will just be those vertices in whatever positions they are when I look at it in object mode. But there's a little bit of a quirk. I can't apply it without first applying the mirror modifier. And that's just because how it works is it, you have to work from the sort of top down in the list. So first what I'm going to do is go into the little drop down menu, hit apply on the mirror modifier, apply on the decimate. And you can see now if I go into edit mode, we no longer have the mirroring effect. All the geometry is now triangular. And this is what we want. But because I turned on symmetry in the decimate modifier, I can actually reintroduce the mirror modifier. So if I go into front or side view in this case, and then toggle x-ray mode on using shift Z, I can select half of the vertices just by dragging over them. And then I'll delete half of those out, add in a mirror modifier again, turn on clipping, set the axes to be correct. And we'll end up with a visually identical result, but now we can control each individual polygon in edit mode. And what that will allow me to do is now go in and use the knife tool with K. And what the knife tool does is you can sort of think of it as almost like a lasso in Photoshop or something. You can just go on to, you can just cut out geometry that you want, faces that you want. And this just saves you adding in loads of edge loops and getting in a mess with all of that. So I'm going to cut out uh, a shape for the nose here. And then I'm going to cut an eye shape and assign these both the black material. And then I could still tweak all this geometry. And, you know, maybe refine some of what the decimate modifier did in places if I want to. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That, that, that concludes the model. Uh, it, ready to be rigged now, ready to be rendered. Um, I hope you were able to learn something from this. I hope, you know, it was, it was easy to follow along. Um, let me know what you think.